Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Into the Pit. And strangely enough, I have a guy on here named AC with the Metal Podcast. And we are not going to talk music. AC, let's uh, introduce you to the audience. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, well, my my name is AC. It's, uh, it's good enough. I am the host of the Metal Podcast. I am a firm believer in Christ Almighty. Christ is King. And I think that the world is overrun with demons. Yeah. How much further would you like to, to delve <laughs> in, in, into that? Because I don't want to give you my backstory. I, you know, I want to cut, <laughs> cut more to the, to the chase. So we, we have limited time. So just... I, I don't know how far we should delve into that subject. Because, uh... well, well, okay, so uh, I, I used to, I used to be a bit of a, a conspiracy theorist, mm -hmm. and I, and I, I think just we as people, we we have naturally curious minds. Like we we like puzzles and whatnot, and we're we're presented with these mysteries. And if you're smart enough, you know, you just kind of do the old, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Let me find out more. And I think there are some conspiracy theories out there that they're undeniably false as far as um, the, the narrative that is presented. Like if you think that John Fitzgerald Kennedy was killed by a lone communist sympathizer because he was unhappy with how the president handled Cuba, uh, you, are, you are a bit uh, dull in the head. Yep. But there are other ones, like the world is ran by lizard people. I think that that is out there, intentionally put out there by nefarious entities, whether it be the CIA or you know, the World Economic Forum, what 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 have you, wh whoever is in charge, Illuminati, Freemasons, pick pick your pick your one pick your boogeyman that's meant to discredit the other conspiracy theories. And I think a lot of this is done. Uh, because the world is ran by evil forces. So I believe we do live in a fallen world. And then that's that's kind of the, the genesis of our people. We were cast out of paradise because Eve ate from the tree of knowledge. And we, as a result, are paying for it. We, we, are, we don't live in God's kingdom. That, that comes later. So right now we are living in a fallen world and I believe this fallen world is overran with demons. And here's a, a, a conspiracy theory that I, I have heard. And this one, I, I kind of, you know, I give it the old eyebrow raise possibly at some point, a portal to hell was open. And I think there's a lot of silly things like CERN CERN. They're trying to open a portal to hell. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. A lot of people believe it but a lot a million people is still a lot for a world with almost 8 billion in it so it's still kind of a, a fringe thing but at one point the the world had problems but now the world is nothing but problems there there is not a place you can really go that has a population that isn't riddled with disease and starvation and murder and i think there are absolutely demonic entities at work yeah hey look at what's going on each generation we get further and further away from god would you have dreamed of back in say the 50s of television shows that mock god and you know, basically, they, they people just say they don't believe it's a myth of this old man living in the sky with a gray beard and yada, yada, yada. And it, it has gotten so bad. Now people go beyond just making or, or saying they don't believe. They make fun of God. They, they curse him. And I think that demons are taking over. Uh, well, have you ever heard of the Hayes Code? The Hayes Code? No, I can't say that I have. 
So it was a, a thing that was put in place in Hollywood. I believe it was put there by the Catholic Church that basically said that movies needed to follow certain moral guidelines mm-hmm. because we were still a Christian and mostly moral um, country at the time. And a lot of Hollywood studios, they would just ignore it anyway, but eventually they put out some movie that violated it. And then they, they used it under the guise of, well, um, it's for historical purposes. And then eventually they just threw it out. So there was a time when they legally had to follow morality guidelines for, for putting products out. And then now we're at the point there, there's a show called the boys where they're having like, and this is on Amazon prime. So any kid could have access to it as long as their parents do where they're, they're having like full frontal S and M sex and violence and murder. It's, it's not like back in, in as, as early as the nineties, they would bleep out damn on TV before a certain time. So like if, if, if it was before like 8 p.m., like there, there was no cursing allowed. And then now that like, it's, it's all, it's all gone. And n- n- no, everyone just thinks, well, this is, it's just normal. It's, it's, it's what they refer to as the new normal, which is just a fancy way of saying it's abnormal because if it's a new normal, it's not normal. It's, it, it is, it is literally abnormal. So people have just accepted abnormality if or abnormality sorry and a lot of people will chop this up to well these politicians are so stupid and out of touch no they're not Uh, uh, most of them are very smart they know exactly what they're doing now i I, and i i don't like to get political on on my show but even though the the metal podcast on soundcloud uh, check it out it is it is pretty much a, a, a show about music culture because it is, it's, it's something that everyone can relate to because not everyone likes watching movies. Not everyone likes watching TV. Almost everyone likes listening to music because there's such a wide variety of it. And in this day and age, it's, it's easy to, to get access to any kind of music you want because everyone has YouTube. So whatever you want, you can find it. But I try to live my life as close as I can to, to following the teachings of Jesus Christ. I don't always do it. And I, I pray for forgiveness every night, but the one thing I, I do, I go out of my way to make sure that I am not breaking the 10 commandments. That, that is, that's a pretty easy thing to not do. I could, you know, when I was younger, I, I, I did shoplift a few times. Because I, I came from a place where I didn't have a lot of money. So I was at a store, you know, take a candy bar. I do still feel bad about doing it, you know, even though I was 10 years old. But, uh, yeah, I don't do that anymore. Very easy. Uh, I, I've, I've never killed anyone. You know, I don't covet my neighbor's wife, yada, yada, yada. You, you get the point. Uh, yeah, I don't break those. But the people in power, they absolutely do. And they're almost like a death cult because they are trying to destroy the world, I believe. Oh, and then yeah. you have two signs of it. I, I think there are people, there are radical evangelicals that they have an extremely perverted view of Christianity yeah. where I don't believe that we will know when Jesus comes back. The Bible says he will, so I believe it. But you can't force Jesus to come back. It doesn't work that way. Because that would assume that you have more power and more knowledge than Jesus. And you have control over him. It's not how it works. You do not have control over your king, whether it's Jesus or Charles. It's just not how it works. So you have these people doing that. And I think that comes from a demonic corruption of Christianity. Because Christianity... Well, I believe holds a society together. So how do you break a society? Well, you, you corrupt what holds it together and Christianity was corrupted. Now I don't think a bad person could do that. I think there is a a difference between bad and evil. 
and I and I wholly believe in in demonic possession. I, and I believe it's not it's probably not like the exorcist where you know your head spins around and you know you you speak backwards. But it it's what what gets you to eat from that metaphorical tree of knowledge. And that's what gets people to do certain acts, you know, use your, use your imagination as to what I'm referring to, whether it's destroying your body or destroying other people's bodies. But in, in your darkest hour, you might steal a loaf of bread. If you're starving, I will not really hold that against someone because biologically we are designed to survive, but in your darkest hour, there is never any reason to draw a weapon and kill someone. And obviously this isn't referring to war where you're fighting for a purpose and there's someone seeking to kill you. That's self-defense. And, and this is a mistranslation. It's not thou shall not kill. It's thou shall not murder. And there's a difference between someone's coming at you with a knife and then you subdue them and, and kill them just to survive versus I don't like the way that guy to talk to my sister and then you pull out a, a, a gun and you just shoot them in the head that's different in your darkest hour a a, a moral man will not murder right. and, and and go down the line with anything and, and we and we can we can go to like what about lies versus white lies like if let's say uh your your wife is you know seven and a half months pregnant and she's not feeling too pretty like oh if you find me attractive like oh you're as beautiful as the day i met you like you're not lying to her you know you're you're making her feel good but also she's carrying your child so there is a a beauty aspect to it you're not looking at her like you know no you look you're the ugliest thing i've ever seen look i'm just being honest i'm following the bible like these like th th this is that that sanctimonious garbage that that anti-christians try to hang people on but right you're you're being polite and she probably knows that you don't find her as attractive as she was when you met her when she was 19 and a, and a figure model but she wants to hear you say that because it like you both know it's it's not the truth but she just wants the compliment for, for comfort but there's a difference between that and and bearing false witness and that's what I was getting at with the politicians where mm -hmm. like they're saying, oh, we're doing this for the good of, of whatever. Like a good example is Saddam has weapons of mass destruction. Like, the, well, they knew he didn't, but they were bearing false witness. They just wanted to destabilize the area. And I think most of these people are trying to march us towards Armageddon because you have two people. You have genuine antichrist, like anti-Christians, say, say, Panic demons that are just trying to destroy the world because all they can do is destroy. And then you have these people that have been corrupted by said demons and they're marching us towards destruction because they've had their brains poisoned and they believe, well, Jesus will just come back. But do you think that you'll be rewarded with the afterlife by killing billions of people because those people they're not being killed for any righteous cause in fact they're being killed for a selfish cause you're trying to kill the world so you can bring back jesus and get raptured up for yourself mm -hmm. you're not doing it for everyone else you're doing it for you which that is the, the core of evil you're doing things for selfish reasons and that, that's the difference between bad and evil because you don't understand why something is wrong. You do it. It's bad. Like very, very elementary. Like you're a child. Like, oh, I didn't know that uh, I was supposed to, to not cheat on my test. I thought I was just supposed to, to, to finish it and get the right answers. Like you don't know that versus like making a career out of just s screwing people over like uh, uh, Michael Milchan, who is Gordon Gecko was based off of or uh, or jordan belfort the wolf of wall street like people that have made a living out of screwing people over and they've made millions to billions out of doing it and uh and that i think is the line between bad and evil and i do think the, that 
there is demonic activity and we've had conditions like what America is looking at now. It is, it is stuff that we've, we've seen it, uh, in other places like, uh, the, the fall of the Roman empire is, is similar or uh, Weimar Germany in the, the last days that like they are similar things, but it's, it's never been quite as bad. Mm. Like, well, uh, I, I would say abortion is essentially sacrifices to Moloch. And, and, and it, it really is just, it's just baby murder because we can go for like, what's the definition of life? It's like growth response to stimuli. Uh, I, I off the top of my head, I, I can't remember. It, it's four things that define what, what a life is and, and babies fall into that. Like, and we're talking about like the, the scientific definition and all it is, it's just the, the, the death of a, of a baby. And, uh, I do believe that it, it is a sacrifice to Moloch. Like how many babies have been murdered since Roe v. Wade? It's what hundreds of millions the, to 400 million. I don't know the exact statistics, but even one is too many. Sure. Yeah. And, and it's, and most of the reason why, because the, what they go with, like, oh, what if the woman is raped? Oh, like, oh, what if the baby is severely disabled? That's such a small percentage. Almost all of them are aborted because it's an inconvenience, which is selfishness, which is evil because it's not, and they, they try to frame it like, oh, but what if the woman can't care for the baby? Well, do you have any idea how many government programs there are to to, to help you have like assistance for a baby. Do you know how many poor people have multiple babies? Now you could say the quality of life isn't great. Sure. That's, that's fine. That that's a different argument, but it's not like you have a baby. Now you both starve to death. Right. Like there are still wick stores. There is welfare. I would assume most people have families that can help in some way. And I, and we are getting into this weird state of the country where there's not a lot of people really have friends or communities. So many people are, are really isolated, you know, but no man is an Island. And, and this is the point of it. So you have these people that no one is so alone that having a kid is a death sentence, because if you're that alone, you're probably not having a child then. You're probably that much of a shut-in. True. <clears throat> so what made you first look into demons and things like that? Did you have some kind of an experience, or is it just your religious background? Yeah, a, a long time ago, I, I did have one weird moment um, where I, I thought the place I was living in was haunted. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this was when I was a young man. And I was like, no, I swear there's, I'm, I'm always having nightmares and, and like weird stuff happens. And I was telling someone about it and I, and they said, there's no such thing as ghosts. Your, your house isn't haunted. And as I said that my, or as they said that my door slammed. Whoa. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, whoa, whoa, that was great. Like, and I'm not like scared. I'm like, whoa, whoa, that was crazy, man. Whoa. <laughs> But and I, I think, you know, maybe, maybe it's possible that was a, that was a coincidence, but just, just trying to have a better understanding of, of why every facet of life and society is, is failing. I've just been examining as much world history and, and, and U S history as I can, and things have never been as bad as they are. And a lot of what I see, because the, the, the biggest issue or not issue, but most obvious, most obvious thing to point at is the transgender issue. That's never really been something that like dying societies have experienced because, you know, the Roman empire, the, even the British empire, the, the, the Ottoman Empire, they they did have their own problems with degeneracy, but 
this is a relatively new phenomenon and it's, it's not new. It, like it's existed before both of our lifetimes, but it was, it was still in the er, early stages, you know, in the, in the thirties. So I do see that, especially when it's being pushed on children. Yeah. You, you have kids, right? Oh yeah. I have three kids and, and, uh, well, five, if you count my, my, two extras that came with my my new wife and then i have three grandkids uh how how old is your middle grandkid my middle grandson is eight okay um if you were if you were with him for a day and he and uh you walked by a tattoo parlor and he said can i get a tattoo what would you say i'd say hell no what what why though (laughs) because that's that's a decision that he would he would uh, live to regret. That's something you should wait until you're older and you know that's exactly what you want. Okay, so you wouldn't what what if it was just like a a, a heart that says mom like on on his shoulder? That's, no, that's too young to make that kind of decision. Okay, but um but he's allowed to mutilate himself irreparably. Mm-hmm. I, that's not for my kids i'll tell you that well, well, it, well exactly but the thing is that it is I, i'm fairly certain that it is illegal for a child to get a tattoo but it is not yeah. illegal for a child to have irreversible cosmetic surgery to it's it doesn't even alter their gender it alters the uh, the appearance. appearance of their gender it gives the illusion of of the swapping of the gender, and I do see that as a child sacrifice because a- about fifty percent of transgender people kill themselves. And if if you look at these statistics, oh, well, people will say, well, uh, well, that's because they're marginalized and oh, they're. Um, it's how they're 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 treated by society and the the traumas that they've had to deal with. Well, uh, slaves did not have a suicide rate like that. Uh, Holocaust survivors didn't have the suicide rate like that. Even other uh, other other. What's a, another example? Um, like a more modern one. I guess there is there isn't really anything to, to to else to to compare it to, but like I just picked the the two most extreme examples, and it's still such a low percentage compared to these people, and I do believe there is demonic influence because these are people that are already kind kind of mentally weak, like some something is wrong with them to defy their biology. Because we are designed a, a certain way, like homosexuality. The, the thing, the thing is, it, it's it's not. It, it just goes against your biology. It, it, it to me, I, I don't see it too much different than someone who's like anorexic, because we're designed to to keep going, and part of that is to to procreate and, and keep keep the race going. So if someone was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm anorexic. It's just how I am. No one would say, well, that's brave, but no one, the, where, where's the anorexia pride parade? <laughs> where, where's the, where's the district in New York? That's the anorexic district. Where's the TV shows for the anorexic people? I, I see it as the same thing. It, it is a, a biological defiance of, of sorts. And uh, to to push it on a child, children don't even understand their own sexuality. So now That's they're true. they're saying like, oh well, my my son like, what well, we I took my son, and a lot of it does come from like single mothers, like they're like some people that that there's already some some kind of trauma in their life. Oh, we went to the the circus, and my son wanted the pink cotton candy instead of the blue one. That's how I knew he was transgender. So I gave him the surgery, uh, and he turned 18 and then he killed himself mm. and it just keeps going. And I, I, I don't think that that's anything other than satanic corruption. I mean, personally, 
I don't agree with it, but if you're going to make that kind of decision, wait until you're an adult. Give yourself some time to really think about it. Well, here here is uh here's something that I would suggest because I, I don't agree with it. And I don't think it should just be like you turn 18, do whatever you want, because how many no, 18 no, year no. olds have you ever met that like, even though like if, if an 18 year old robs a bank, he's, he's getting the same sentence as in the other adult, right. how many 18 year olds have you met that you're like, that is a mature person. Not that, very that, many. Yeah. You're, you're still a child. Your brain doesn't finish developing till 25. Exactly. So they're still preying on them. So how about this? Um, you 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 put a little uh, a little restriction. Uh, you you have to wait till you're at least twenty five to apply for it, and then you have to wait four years. I mean that's just an arbitrary number, but you can't just okay. Let's go snip me, doc. All right, let's get you on the table. All right, Frank. Here comes Francine. We're ready to go. Yeah, it's <laughs> it it can't it can't be that simple, but it is. It, that and that's that's where we're at. Is people people have been corrupted, and and that's kind of the story of mankind. But a lot of this, uh, I I did, I, I did kind of become more agnostic when I was when I was younger, mm-hmm. just because when you're when you're younger, you're just you're not quite when you're just especially going through puberty you're not quite sure what to make of anything and you're just trying to find who you are but i think that's just hormonal hormonal uh, confusion Mm -hmm. and then once you know i became an adult i'm like all right my head's on straight i'm back and just a lot of this feels very biblical well even even at 25 okay I made decisions back then that when I got older, I was like, why did I do that? And I mean, heck, you could even say till today, there's things I I wished I hadn't done last week. So do you really know what you really want? You go and you do it. And then a year down the road, you're like, why in the world did I do this? I mean, to each his own, uh, in the sense, I'm a libertarian when it comes to that, you know, that's between you and God. I don't have to agree with it. I'm not going to hate you because I I'm I just don't hate. You know, I I hate maybe a situation, but I don't hate people. You know, you I hate you, evil. Yeah, I hate the sin, but I don't hate the sinner. If that makes sense. So I don't know. To each his own. I just think you should really think about it before you jump into something like that. I mean, how many people have thought, oh, I'm going to go get this tattoo, and they rush and they go get the tattoo, and then they, a couple of years, they're like, why did I get that? And they're getting it covered up. You know, well, I mean, well, I, well, I love tattoos myself, and there's tattoos that I got when I was younger that I, that I had to get covered because they were just stupid. Well, think about how many people get, like, like Asian symbols, like they get like a Japanese or a Chinese character right. and they're like, it, it means like badass, but really it means like dumbass <laughs> or, or uh Peking chicken or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, like they don't know what it means. Like they, they, they get these things and then, you know, they have a, a friend that actually understands what that is. And like, why would you get that? Like, what do you mean? Like, it means I'm cool. Like, no, it doesn't. It means you're a loser. Like, Oh, Oh wait, what? Oh yeah. So like this tattoo artist, he just knew how stupid you were. And then he he preyed on you. And then that's with you for the rest of your life. And it's the same thing with with, like, like these transgenders. So if if anyone wants to, to say like, Oh, you don't know what they're like. Well, neither do you. Like, why do you assume like if someone says like, who are you to say what is or isn't best for someone's body? Okay. That's now that's fair. I I don't know, like you might need more iron because you have a condition or something, or maybe you're diabetic and you need insulin shots or something like that. Like, Hey, like I'm not, I'm not going to be there to say like, Hey, don't take that insulin because it's like, well, he has diabetes. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't know. But I know that if I cut off my hand, 
it's going to be bad for me. Just like I know if you cut off your hand, it's going to be bad for you. Because it's not as simple as, I'm a vegan, okay? Well, you shouldn't be vegan because this, that, and whatever. Or I'm a carnivore. Well, you shouldn't be a carnivore because this, that, whatever. It Because diets do affect people differently. People have different metabolism. People have different genetics and all that. But when it comes to actual physical uh, mutilation is, is all it is. It, it, it is mutilation. I, I do know what's best for you on, on that front because it's what's best for you is to not hurt yourself. And it's, it's not like, I don't know the long-term effects of Botox, but it's not like you're getting Botox and it fades away after a while. It's, it's no. not and like it's a poison. Well, yeah, it is. Uh, but again, yeah, I don't know. I'm not an expert on Botox, but it's, it's, I'm sure it's not good for you, but it does, the, the effects do wear off after a certain point. It's, it's not like, oh, time for, for my monthly, like transgender upkeep, like, oh, well, maybe ah, I'm going to pass this month. I'm going to go back to how I was. No, it is. It's, it's permanent. And even for some people that don't actually get the surgery for it, well, the, the hormones that you have to inject yourself with that, that messes with your endocrine system that causes cancer. Yes. So like, you're at, at, at worst, you're making yourself high risk for cancer and cancer, uh, leads to death as, uh, many people, uh, may, uh, be shocked to learn. So I do know that, uh, death is bad for you. So maybe I don't know what's best for you on, uh, on superficial levels, as far as like the, the diet you take in or the toothpaste you use or the, the hand soap you use. Maybe I don't know what's best for you, but I do know from, from just basic, from a, a basic a focus of, I have been hurt. I don't like pain. I do know that wounds that do not heal are bad for you and and you say it's well it's between you know them and god well your your body is a temple it, it is yeah. god's gift to you and you're desecrating that temple which i see as satanic and again uh, yeah i will i i don't hate those people i don't see it as, in fact it's more that i love them and i don't want them to hurt themselves and it, it's like, imagine you had a friend that, that that's like, I'm going to uh, film myself jumping off of this high rise. And, uh, w well, uh, don't do that. But, hey, hey, who are you to, to, to know what is and isn't good? Well, I'm, I just want you to be safe. I don't want you to be hurt. And it's, it's like the, the TikTok stuff where those kids were like, eating the soap. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they don't realize that, they see that over and over and that's where they got the idea to eat it. They, they eat the soap because a lot of people were doing it. And I would say it's without question that the media apparatus is satanic yeah. and they only think these things because it's put in front of them. No, no, like no child was quote unquote transgender for 2000 years and all of a sudden it's like one in four that's yeah. that that is that is a that's a pattern worth noticing it's not evolution it's it's it is demonic corruption and uh, alistair crowley said that children make the best sacrifices as we we did our episode with William Ramsey talking about the West Memphis three and, uh, Damien Eccles certainly had his, uh, infatuation with Alistair Crowley. And I just see this as a modern, uh, ch uh child sacrifice because eventually that, that child one, it's going to be sterile. Like that's just no question about that. So the, the bloodline is ended and there's a, 
50% chance that they kill themselves. So there's sacrifice complete. And it's not because someone, why, well, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that. The studies are all there. The testimonies are there. If if you want, go go ahead and look around the internet for for people telling their stories of like, oh, I got the surgery. I, I didn't know that I wouldn't be able to feel sexual pleasure. And, and you'll see that in a lot of them. They specifically talk about that. So uh, you, you want to know something really interesting? Have you ever thought about LGBTQ? Like, what does that stand for? Uh, so it's lesbian, gay, bi, trans, and gay. I mean, it's kind of, yeah. or he queer. Was, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of repetitive on some of that, but. Except for one of them, except one, only one of those is not a sexual preference. Right. Or is it? Hmm. Because if you look at all of the testimonies of the, the people that are transgender and like all the things that went wrong, they're all talking about how, like the first thing they say is like, I don't feel sexual pleasure anymore because it, it is a sexual fetish and it's just another perversion of what is natural because we are supposed to be fruitful and multiply. And this stops you from doing that. And it's just a different way to experience carnal pleasure without the actual benefit. It's like when you eat food or drink water and you do the, like the, oh, oh the, the orgasmic moan. Well, it's because you're satisfied. It's you're, you're doing what you're supposed to. Like if, if we weren't supposed to do it, it wouldn't feel good, but you take something that feels good and then you pervert it. Um, it doesn't happen so much with with drinking water, but it definitely happens with food mm -hmm. where people like, oh, food is good. So I'll just keep eating it. Like there was the, the old Louis C.K. joke. Like I'm not done eating when I'm full. I'm done eating when I hate myself, <laughs> which is a, it's a funny joke, but that that is reality for a lot of people is. And, and I see that as more body desecration it's a desecration of your temple and obesity like the world's fattest man used to be like like look come see the world's fattest man step right up uh the world fan 1910 uh he's 280 pounds oh, oh my gosh what a freak and now that that's that's just your your average american now yep what i think like 60 percent of america is obese and 30% of it is morbidly obese. The, the, and this is new. And, and the, the weird thing that I hear from people is, well, they're poor, so they don't have access to the same diets as rich people. Well, if you are wealthy, you can eat healthier food, but you need to eat a lot to get fat. Like if you eat, like if, if you go to McDonald's and you just get, uh, like a, a the cheapest McDonald's cheeseburger, and I go to uh, Guy Fieri's restaurant, and I get something that's like, I don't know, every ingredient it's organic or whatever. What you probably had was maybe like three hundred calories. It maybe cost you like a dollar, two dollars. I don't know how much a burger is there. What I got would probably be like thirty, forty dollars, and it would probably be like. 1600 calories even though all the ingredients are fresher or they're made from real ingredients that aren't plastic or or filled with soy or fillers uh maybe it has more nutrients my body can take in but i'm going to gain more weight than the mm -hmm. person that that's eating something that's unhealthy but it, it's less calories you have to eat a lot to get very fat and it, and it, it just it's not because people are poor it's because people have been tempted to this thing feels good let's keep doing it and that's that's not that's not ignorance that's corruption like you because when you're overweight you don't feel good nope. and when you don't feel and, and the and the cure to it is exercise 
which does feel good. And you like you you feel better doing it. Your body releases chemicals that says, yeah, keep going. And then you say, yeah, I do want to keep going. But they don't. They, they get sadder and then they eat more. And this is a perversion. And the, the only answer is, is uh, demons. It's not aliens. It's not lizard people. It's not <laughs> AI robots. Although, you know, those, those things may have their own problems down the road, but uh, I, I do believe that the, the, the answer is it's all biblical. And I think most people that do criticize the Bible, they've just, they've never read it. They, they will read some, or they'll hear some out of context passages from the old Testament, which isn't the teachings of Jesus, by the way. And that's kind of the point was Jesus came down because I, I think People couldn't follow all the Old Testament teachings, so he just simplified it. Like, I'm the way, follow me, or you receive eternal salvation. He died for our sins, that's it. But when you go through the Old Testament, you know, there's some there's some pretty crazy stuff. There was a pretty, pretty vengeful God. But, you know, he lightened up after, you know, Jesus took the weight of the world on himself. And and it's, uh, it's much more, much happier stuff. Although Jesus yeah. did bring the sword. So I think there is nothing wrong with fighting for what you believe in. And there is nothing wrong with hating evil. And the world is not ran by dumb, bad people. The world is ran by evil people that know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. Well, AC, man, we have come to the end of the show. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, this was... Uh, an enlightening conversation to say the least. Well, thank you. I, I do my best. And I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, I hope you'll come back, hit that subscribe button for my regulars. You guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this and until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. Paul boy.